Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, so today we're checking Seraph Haven on the limited deck. I didn't mind the Seraph Haven last time, although it really wasn't a good deck. This one definitely felt a lot better and a lot more consistent, I guess. They're definitely almost identical decks as far as they go, but I don't know whether it's just the current meta changes and stuff like that that's had an effect or what, but I just felt like this was a lot more comfortable for me to play. So we're going to get right into this and check it out. So this deck has quite a favorable matchup against typical rune decks and very typical shadow decks. Tends to be the two matches I find the easiest to win most of the time, with the most difficult match of course being against Sword because, you know, Vals has its Banish and Amulet which is absolutely soul crushing when it does come down. Of course, you don't need to use Seraph to win, you can just outvalue your opponent with high drops which is actually what we do in this rune match. Just dropping a bunch of big wards that can't be targeted by spells makes it very difficult for a rune player to clear them out. And I did decide to go for the Beast Call Aria here, although I probably shouldn't have, but I was a bit worried that this was a potential Daria deck and I need to get something on board for that big splash turn 5 that they typically will do. Also, being able to use, of course, Beast Call Arias in combination with other things works out really well, and that is exactly what we went for here. A turn 3 proc with a couple of decent followers was a lot more value than I was willing to give up. So this time a banishment and a, probably another beast call setup. Just in case, we'll threaten them pretty heavily in this match. It's the only way I can think of winning. Decree will work out nicely if they go wide, but that's really all it's going to be good for. So until then, there's not a lot we can actually do. Forgotten Sanctuary it is, because of course a ward that again is hard to remove is a big advantage in this matchup in particular. So being untargetable definitely is a favourite for me. Especially when something like Daria gets dropped. Now they are forced to use some removal on this. And honestly Owl is the best card they honestly could have had for this match. I really can't fault that line of play. Going for that was the only way you were going to win this that way. So Forbidden Teachings it is. I'm going to try for whatever I can get now. And I am going to take a little bit of damage. I'm willing to accept that if it means I can potentially have a bigger setup. Plus we also get, of course, City of Gold. Which is a much better advantage now. Because I expect them to go wide this turn. So taking 10 damage is just kind of what I have to do at this point. The odds of them being able to kill me that turn were reasonably low, so I was definitely willing to make that sacrifice. So a decree. Resetting the board. The only real risk now would be another Daria, straight off the back of the previous one. But it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. So now we can actually start taking this game in a bit of a different direction. With uh, Forgotten Sanctuaries really crippling our opponent. I also probably should have played the Hollow Dogma on the Forgotten Sanctuary, but I didn't want to risk having them wipe all of my wards out in one turn. That would have just been too big a risk for me to take. Fortunately, wasn't a worry and ended up giving us the victory, so next turn all we would have had to do was play Haven's cards and go for 14 damage. So this Shadow matchup was uh, much more iconic as far as it goes for me. This one was where we actually got to use a Seraph to go off, which is Definitely the most effective way to win games because it's very easy of course to drop them once you have City of Gold on the board It's just of course keeping in mind that getting City of Gold on board while being a priority does depend on matchup Against Rune depending on how the turns are playing out 1 and 2 I don't tend to go for it immediately I much prefer to go for it on turn 4 where I can take full advantage of what I have Unless of course I have no other good play on turn 2 like if I have to decide between Moria and playing it I'll typically go for City but not, of course, all the time. So this match, I decided to, of course, go for City because I'm going to need Forbidden to be activatable very, very easily. And that was going to be the best way to do so. Honestly, this isn't an issue at all. Not something I'm actually going to need to worry about. And still, Tomb, I just wanted a quick draw. I didn't need to worry about overdrawing my hand with two draws later on. I'd much rather just get an immediate draw and use my play points. Sometimes I prefer to take that option depending on how I think the match will play out. So there's really not a lot more to do now, I mean, at this point in the match. 
It's really just going to be swarming these amulets on board and setting up for big plays. And waiting for, of course, a play like this, where Cerberus is actually an issue. Fortunately for us, Cerberus it doesn't look like it's going to be an issue. So we have a 1 in 5 chance of hitting a bad card, 1 in 5 hitting good. We end up getting the good option because now we get a complete banish. Couldn't have asked for a much better banishment that turn. Although Desperate, not as big a problem as it should be because they of course didn't get the stat buff. But still not a card I want to waste the Forbidden on for just 2 followers. So, since we've got a pretty decent setup here for Omen of Repose, and we pretty much have free Evo points at this point, there's really no reason not to play it. Plus, it does mean Omen of Repose is going to still require a couple of hits to die. So, the best thing about this deck in particular, once you get City of Gold and you play in Statute Seraf out, you only need to drop in Statute Seraph twice in the next turn to win, which cuts down, of course, the cards you need to have and the combo potential drastically. You've really only got to have, effectively, three cards in hand to win a game. So, once you drop in Statue Seraph, you then only need the following two, which is great. So, realising that even with an Ecta play, they're not going to be able to kill me, unless they can, of course, banish this amulet, I decided to elect that the best play was to just play it out. There is the Demon Lord, again, without having anything else, it's really not going to be a lethal situation. Although it was close. So now all we need to do, drop this twice, and that'll be game. This is where I think taking advantage of Seraph is really great in most cases. Although it did take a while, of course, to get to this point. I think Aisha would have been the only risky play. So right now, I feel like this deck is definitely performing reasonably well. I wouldn't say it's exceptional, but it's definitely above the average of what I've played most Seraph decks as. And typically, I can win games with this not too difficult, honestly. The only real trouble ones, like I said, are Sword and probably Blood, because Blood is just so aggressive that unless you have perfect counters each turn, it can be very hard to reach that turn 8. And by the time you do, usually health is so low that you can't risk just playing a Seraph on 8. Otherwise, nearly any other matchup is fairly close. Forest can be a little tricky, because... Forest, of course, has the aggressive Roach plays, but outside of that, again, not a big problem. You can usually deal with it if you get a consistent hand. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, you'll find the decklist in the description below. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Until next time, see ya.